This week we are going to study engrams. Engrams capture the intuition that in your brain you know how sentences are going to end. You know that certain sequences of words are more likely than others. In essence, it's like we finish each other's sentences, sandwiches, So the first time I encountered this joke was in a show called Arrested Development. Many shows have had it over the years and it goes something like this. Someone says, it's like we finish each other's and in your mind you know what they want to say. The intention is saying sentences. And the other person says sandwiches. We all have intuitions about which words should come next in a language. These are some examples from English. We all have some intuitions about the next word, what the next word should be in salt and, you're probably thinking salt and pepper. The sentence, I'm a student at Dartmouth, that probably pizza is not the next one. Probably college is the next one. Please come on in and sit roof. Please come on in and sit mouse. Uh, those are probably not the ones you're thinking of. You're probably thinking of sit down. Those were very restricted in what you could predict. There's a few that are more open-ended. I always order pizza with cheese and... Maybe you can think of anchovies. Maybe you can think of... Um, basil. But in no circumstance are you going to think phone. I always order pizza with cheese and phone, for example. And in no case are... Uh, these words going to be the end of the sentence. Salt and the. I'm a student at Dartmouth. The. Please come on in and sit book. I always order pizza with cheese and book. You do have intuitions in your brain about what's going to happen next. You do know that some words are very likely after after you've heard a certain sequence. You also know that after you've heard a sequence, certain words are very unlikely. So salt and pepper is very likely, given salt and. And um, book is very unlikely, given salt and. Salt and book. We could calculate these probabilities if we had a collection of documents that was large enough. Let's say we had like a trillion words of English. If we had such a collection, we could see that the sequence salt and pepper is more likely than something like salt and vinegar, and that one's more likely than salt and celery, and that one's more likely than salt and diamonds. So, and we know this in our mind, like we, we kind of feel like salt and pepper should be the first one that we think of. We use collections of documents to calculate those probabilities. We call those uh, corpora. The singular is a corpus. Using a corpus, you can count how often you encounter a word, and we call that a unigram. So you can count amongst your trillion words how often you find the word salt. You could also count characters, like how often you find the letter T, uh, similar to what Markov did with Eugene Onegin. You could also calculate the probability of bigrams, which are two word sequences. Salt and, table and, log and. These could also refer to two character units, such as T followed by H, or H followed by E. You could also have trigrams, which are three word units. Salt and pepper, table and chairs, log and key. They could also be three character units. T-H-E, T-H-O, T-H-P. In English, this character sequence T-H-P is much more likely than the character sequence T-H-P, for example. In general, we're going to call these n-grams, which are strings of n words or n characters. And we're going to calculate the probability of those sequences from a corpus from a collection of documents from a certain language. Engrams are extremely useful for many natural language processing tasks. 
for example, in machine translation. Let's say you have a language and you want to translate it into English. And you have two possible translations for uh, some original phrase. And those translations are high winds tonight and large winds tonight. You could consult your n-gram model for the probability of these trigrams, of these three word sequences. And you will see that in English, the sequence high winds is much more likely than large winds. So even if both high and large were possible translations of the original word, the uh, machine should go with high winds because that one is more likely in English from the n-gram model. n-grams could be used for spell checking. So a minuet is a kind of dance. It does exist as a word. So you could have 15 minuets, but it it's a very infrequent word. So the computer might calculate that 15 minuets is very unlikely as opposed to 15 minutes, which would be much more likely. And if it detects this disparity, it might say, oh, maybe what I have here is a spelling mistake and 15 minutes would be much more likely. We could use anagrams in speech recognition. Let's say we get a sequence of sounds like, I saw a fan. We could uh, put that in English words as I saw a fan, but probably you could put that in the English words eyes saw of an, I saw a fan. The computer could then uh, take that foregram and calculate the probability of I saw a fan as um, typed in with the first four words, I saw a fan. Calculate that probability as opposed to the probability of eyes saw of an. And we'll determine that the first probability is much more likely, and so this is probably the way that sh these words should be typed. Did I mention a trillion words? Yes. Uh, there's an important n-gram called the Google n-gram model, which has a 1 trillion 24 billion words in it. It has, um, it has all of those words, in its corpus, and from there they calculated 1.1 billion sequences of up to five words that appear at least 40 times in the text. And from all of the corpus, they got 13.5 million unique words after discarding those that appear less than 200 times. So that was their threshold for what a word should be, something that appears at least 200 times, and they found 13.5 million of those. You can download this model, by the way, I'll show you where in a second, and you can use it for any of your programs. If you download it, you're gonna find the frequencies of certain collocations, like all of these four grams, serve as the independent, serve as the individual, serve as the index, so serve as the independent happens 794 times out of those trillion words. Um, a foregram like serve as the indispensable happens 40 times in those trillion words. Here's the website. Let's take a brief look. The default example it has is comparing bi the bigram Albert Einstein with the bigram Sherlock Holmes with the unigram Frankenstein. And as you can see here, this is the comparison of the occurrence of those words in the corpus in the last 200 years. So the word Frankenstein has existed since the 1800s, and as you can see, it has had a spike in occurrence since the 1960s in documents that were written in the 1960s or later. The bigram Albert Einstein started existing in the early 20th century and has had a linear growth ever since. Sherlock Holmes started in the 1880s and has grown, gone up and down, but it's fairly steady. Notice that you have many languages, not many, actually just quite a few, in which you can do uh, Google n-grams. Let's look at the original n-grams that we had a few slides ago. 
salt and pepper, salt and vinegar, salt and celery, salt and diamonds. As you can see, salt and pepper is much more frequent than all of the others. It shut up and put in occurrences in the 1960s documents, but it's always been there. And it's two orders of magnitude uh, more frequent than the next one, salt and vinegar, which you can barely see here. Let's eliminate salt and pepper so that the scale would, will adjust. Here we have salt and pepper, which is much more likely than salt and celery or, or salt and diamonds. It is, again, two orders of magnitude larger than salt and celery. Let's go to salt and celery. It's not as is more frequent than salt and diamonds, but not by much. But salt and diamonds is still the least frequent one, probably because it occurs with, in mines, but the food collocations are more likely. So just to look at them again in the original scale. This is salt and pepper, salt and vinegar, salt and celery, salt and diamonds. Let's use an example in some other language, in Spanish. The same examples. Sal pimienta is salt and pepper. Sal y vinagre is salt and vinegar. As you can see, salt and pepper, salt and vinegar. Salt and pepper is much more frequent. Um, one order of magnitude more frequent than salt and vinegar in Spanish. And again, as you can see, I, I, I rectify it. There's very few languages, actually, and hope, uh, one would hope that we would have many more. But these are very difficult to make. As you can see, gathering a trillion words in any language is difficult work. In summary, words don't occur at random. Words uh, are likely to occur together. So salt and pepper is, would be a very common trigram. Salt and book would not be a very common trigram. You have these intuitions in your mind, and somehow we have to replicate them into our computer systems. We're going to do that by gathering corpora, a corpus, a large collection of documents from which we can calculate probabilities. And we're going to make a language model that knows what words go together. We're going to call this an n-gram model. Engrams are extremely useful for many natural language processing tasks, such as spell checking, machine translation, speech recognition, and we're going to use them for uh, things like new sentence generation and for spell checking in the rest of the week.